There were giants in the earth in those days, and also Imagine. after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became the mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Renowned. Scary stuff. End time production. Shout if out to them. If really subscribe. existed, well then where are the bones? Wouldn't we see evidence of them all over museums and places like the Smithsonian? The Smithsonian Institution is continually linked to giant skeletons, or at least the lack of them. Dozens of reports end in something that sounds like this. The bones were shipped to the Smithsonian Institution for further study. In this video, we look at Whoa. giant skeletons that were either sold or given to the Smithsonian, and even reports of Smithsonian fun- Let's pause right there. Look at the sheer size of that. Imagine that facing you. Oh! <laughs> ...scientists directly discovering them. Let's take a look at some of the documented reports of giant bones and giant skeletons from early American history. Gigantic Indian. Wow. The Weekly Democratic Statesman, Austin, Texas, April 12, 1883, page 6, Bristol, Tennessee. Mr. John W. Emmert, employed by the Bureau of Ethnology of the Smithsonian Institution at Washington, has lately explored a mound at Bristol, Tennessee, and secured some interesting, valuable Indian relics. Among other things in the mound was found the skeleton of a gigantic Indian. 14 Human Skeletons West Virginia A Guide to the Mountain State, 1952 Page 488 Staunton Park, West Virginia, 1883 In Staunton Park, a triangular park near the western end of town is a colonial Indian burial mound, 175 feet in circumference at the base and 30 feet high. Ornaments, stone weapons, fragments of pottery, and 14 human skeletons, one more than 7 feet long, were found when the mound was opened by the federal government in 1883. Monster Skulls and Bones New York Times, April 5th, 1886, Catersville, Georgia. This news report from the New York Times describes how water receded from the Tumlin Mound Field, now called Etowa Mounds, and revealed, quote, acres of skulls and bones. Some of these are gigantic. If the whole frame is in proportion to two thigh bones that we found, the owner must have stood 14 feet tall. Also found was ornaments of shell, brass, and stone. It was noted that a quote, representative of the Smithsonian Institution is here investigating the curious relics, end quote. This fact was confirmed by its inclusion in the Smithsonian's fifth annual report, 1887. Wow. The Itawa Mound site is just south of Catersville, Georgia, and is a 54-acre site that was built and occupied in three phases from 1000 to 1550 AD. Itawa has three platform mounds and three lesser mounds. Temple Mound A is 63 feet high with a base of three acres. It overlooks Temple Mound B. This is another wonderfully impressive site from the Mississippian era of the mound builders. Another report from the American Antiquarian 752 in 1885, quote, On the stones which covered the vault were carved inscriptions, and these when deciphered will doubtless lift the veil that now shrouds the history of the race of people that one time inhabited this part of the American continent. The relics have been carefully packed and forwarded to the Smithsonian Institute, and they are said to be the most interesting collection ever found in the United States. The last account from the Itawa Mound in Charlottesville, Georgia, comes from the North Otago Times, July 23, 1884, page 2. H. R. Hazelton recently opened a large Indian mound near Cartersville, Georgia. A layer of very heavy flagstone covered a deep vault, in which was found the skeleton of a man 9 foot 2 inches in height, surrounded by seven other skeletons, apparently those of very young persons. The giant evidently had been a king as his head was encircled with a copper crown. His hair black as jet reached to his waist, but he had no whiskers. The bottom of the vault had first been uncovered with a thick matting of reeds and dry grass over which were spread the skins of some wild animal. The underside of the stones covering the grave were filled with deeply carved inscriptions. If it is ever possible to decipher these, Mr. Hazelton thinks he will have something reliable in regard to prehistoric man in America. 
This next account comes from Crawford, Minnesota, from the American Antiquarian, 1887, volumes 9 and 10, January to November, 1887, page 176. Quote, At a depth of 14 feet below the surface, the workmen came upon a skeleton of a giant. In a tolerable good state of preservation, the skeleton was 8 feet 2 inches in length and measured 2 feet 2 inches across the pelvis. At another point, about six miles from where this skeleton was found, at the mouth of the Sioux, one of the agents or employees of the Smithsonian Institute at Washington exhumed the remains of another skeleton, the size of which was calculated to be about nine feet in length. The biggest giant ever known from the world, October 7th, 1895, San Diego, California, quote, the corpse of the biggest man that ever lived has been dug up near San Diego, California. At all events, there is no satisfactory record in ancient or modern history of any human being nearly so tall. The mummy for in such a condition the remains were found is that of a person who would have been about nine feet high in life. This makes allowances for shrinkage, which may be pretty closely calculated. As to the accuracy and the estimate, there can be no question, as the cadaver has been carefully inspected and measured by Professor Thomas Wilson, curator of the Department of Prehistoric Anthropology in the Smithsonian Institution and by other scientists. The tape line even now registers the length from heel to top of the head at eight feet four inches. The body was found in a cave by a party of prospectors. Over the head, are the remnants of a leather hood. The man was well advanced in years. It has been stated that the man must have surpassed in height any giant of whom there is historical record." End quote. This next one comes from the San Francisco Call, August 22nd, 1897. Bones of Prehistoric Man skeletons of giant found in rude sepulture on Pine Ridge. Quote, the discovery of the bones of a giant in a rudely excavated hole in a limestone rock on the western slope of Pine Ridge has aroused considerable interest among local anthropologists. U.N. Briggs and Frank Patton unearthed the remains of what appeared to be a prehistoric man last week while out hunting on Pine Ridge. It being quite warm, the hunters have sought a shady place at the base of a tall limestone cliff. They sat for an hour or so, enjoying the soft breezes that wafted from the valley beyond, and Briggs and poking around in a hole in the rock unearthed several bones. They appeared to be those of a human being. Upon closer scrutiny, it was discovered that the cavity in which the bones had been deposited was evidently the work of human hands. The walls had been cut with a sharp pointed instrument and the entrance of the tomb or sepulcher had at one time been closed up. The hunters examined the tomb closely and found a number of bones of feet and hands and portions of the skull. The remains will be sent to the Smithsonian Institution. This next one is called Finding Skeletons of a Giant from the Worthington Advance, November 18, 1897, page 3. Ethnological Work of the Smithsonian's Division of Eastern Mounds. Quote, It is officially recorded that agents of the Bureau of Ethnology have explored more than 2,000 of these mounds. Among the objects found were pearls in great numbers and some of very large size. It is a matter of official record that, in digging through a mound in Iowa, the scientists found the skeleton of a giant who, judging from actual measurements, must have stood seven feet six inches tall when alive. The bones crumbled to dust when exposed to the air. Around the neck was a collar of bear's teeth and across the thighs were dozens of small copper beads. The Washington Post, January 16th, 1910, quote, the first white man to explore the interior of the Queen Charlotte Islands, Captain Newton Chittenden, was an American lawyer and lecturer who wrote both popular and governmental reports. He was a Union Cavalry Regiment officer during the Civil War who was admitted to the Supreme Court. He also exhibited Indian and Inuit relics in Europe. These he collected while traveling 3,400 miles on a burrow and on foot through the Southwest, Northwest, and Central Plains. 
During his explorations for the government, Chittenden collected a massive skull of a giant. The article states that he, quote, long treasured it as a priceless possession, and the skull was of great interest to European anthropologists who examined it. He was offered great sums of money to part with the skull, but he ended up donating it to the Smithsonian Institution. Assistant Director of Anthropology, Alice Hardika, when presented with the skull, said, it surpassed any previously in the institution. This next one is about a man who refuses to sell the skeleton of a giant to the Smithsonian. It's from the Arizona Journal Miner, October 13th, 1911, page 3. Walnut Creek, Arizona. Quote, Mr. Shoup was provided with photographic instruments and took several pictures. Mr. Shoup of the Smithsonian also desired to take it, the giant skeleton, back to Washington. But this request was held up by Mr. Marks, stating that, as the subject was found in the territory, it should be kept there. Mr. Shoup and Mrs. Shoup of the Smithsonian was very much interested in those portions of the human frame that were intact, particularly the skull, which indicated that the giant was of such an abnormal size as to be beyond comprehension of that of a human being. If authentic, one would assume that the photographs should still be in the Smithsonian records, but they're not. And that leads us to the question, where is that picture and all the bones that the Smithsonian has taken throughout the years? The news stories we just read are just the tip of the iceberg. There's many more news articles that report giant bones being brought into the Smithsonian for review. However, the official record declares giants to be myth. So what's going on here? Is this a cover up or something else? Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. Ah, here I am. Is this a cover up or what do you mean? Is this? A, of course, this is a cover up. What else could this be? I promise you guys, what else could this be? This is definitely 100% a cover up because if. It, uh, it's been proven to be true that giants do exist. It then solidifies what the Bible says. It proves the Bible correct because the Bible talks about giants like it, it, the Bible mentions giants. Okay. Noah's Ark, the whole flooding, Nephilim, giants. I know it's not like in scripture uh, right now, but even a ton of people are mentioning to me the book of Enoch as well mentions giants which you know Enoch in the Bible so you know it's not included in the Bible but you get the gist anyways giants is something that's mentioned in the Bible a lot six fingers six toes so they don't want that anything that can disprove the Bible I think they just hop on okay you know what let's hide this sir sir listen to me we don't want this to come out because this will mean they all start converting to Christian. Now we don't want that. We don't want that. We'll keep that hidden. Okay, very very hidden. So that's what I'm saying, man. This this stuff is absolutely insane. Ah, <sighs> may God be with us all. And um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, in fact, let me know in your comment in the comment section down below what you think. Are giants real or not? Is this hidden away from us? Yes or no? Let me know in the comment section down below. Smash the like button. And uh, yeah, God bless you all, man. Subscribe if you want to.